Oh, Clint. Um, Clint. Clint. I don't remember his last name. He was just Clint. He was one year older than me, 11. He had a lazy eye. He was slightly chubby. He had gap teeth and spoke with a lisp. He had dirty hair, not dirty blonde hair, just dirty hair that happened to be blonde. He was slightly pigeon-toed, and I suspect his clothes were from Kmart. He was a total outcast, and he was the only kid at school who wanted to be my friend. Our friendship was ignited by our mutual love of Miss Joan Rivers. Yeah. Oh, Martin, I just love her so much. She's so funny. I know, I would say, can we talk? We loved doing can we talk. During recess, while other boys were playing sports and fighting, we too extended our arms, but not to punch, to clap in synchronicity and reenact Joan's famous cat phrase, can we talk, can we talk, can we talk? Another one of our favorite non-masculine pastimes was radio show. I play the DJ. Next up is a hit song from a little gal with a big career in front of her, Dolly Parton. And Clint would go right into 9 to 5, tumble out of bed and tumble to the kitchen. Oh, Martin, I can't sing. No one can sing like Dolly. She's a force of nature. Not to mention she's got the power of those giant bazoombas. And if I had those bazoombas, I would knock out anyone who dared get in my way with the sheer weight of just one huge knocker. I really admired Clint's humor and imagination. Okay, Martin, now you sing. I would perform this epically stupid operatic duet, beginning with the man's part. Then I would turn my body dramatically to the other side and sing the girl's part. <laughs> In my mind, the left side of my body was total boy, while the right side was in complete opera drag. Yes, I was half schoolboy, half diva. Oh, oh Martin, you're so talented. You should be on the real radio. Clint and I became inseparable. We were like Sonny and Cher. Well, actually, more like Cher and Cher. Latino Cher and white Cher. We were two Cher's sharing everything. But then something happened, something completely unexpected. I made another friend. Well, kind of. Her name was Lizette Leofuego Mendez. And she was cool, like she had a mullet. <laughs> it was feathered in the front and ran free in the back. Yes. She looked like young Ricky Martin, but with a really wide ass. Okay. Hot. <laughs> Unfortunately, Lizette had a rule. Our friendship had to be kept secret because, well, because I wasn't cool enough. Basically, our friendship was over the phone. Lizette, can I at least sit by you during lunch? Stupid hells no, hells no. <laughs> Listen, Martin, if people knew the real you, things could be different, but ugh, you just need to be yourself and everything. <laughs> I listened to Lizette's advice intently while twirling the cord on my Garfield phone. I am being myself, Lizette. That's the problem. <laughs> Shut up. Open your ears. You gotta dress cool, right? Also, chew gum. Oh, and yeah, ditch Pillsbury Doughboy. Huh? You mean Clint? But Clint's my bestie, stupid. I'm her bestie. That guy is like a total embarrassation. Hey, Redeem, you some kind of masochist or something? No, I. I'm not a masochist. <laughs> Ooh, ditch Doughboy or live forever in purgatory. Later that week, Clint and I were on our way to lunch when these kids started name calling us. Certainly there was nothing unique about that, but I was a bit surprised to see a familiar face in the group. Lizette? She yelled, hey, hey, who's the boy and who's the bitch? They all laughed and laughed, but I didn't cry in front of them. <laughs> Clint looked at me in disbelief. I isn't that your new friend? What a B-I-C-T-H. 
No, 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 she doesn't mean it. It's just that no one can know I'm her friend. Martin said she draws her eyebrows on with a Sharpie. <laughs> and then she smells it. She's not good enough for you. <laughs> Clint, just drop it. At that moment, a French fry was thrown in our direction. Oh, no. F you, Clint retorted as he picked up the fry and put it in his mouth. <laughs> Come on, Mario, let's get lunch. I'm famished. I'm eating alone, I blurted. What? Why? Clint, I I'm sorry, I'm eating alone. Mm. And from that day forward, I ate lunch by myself, and my connection with Clint dwindled. However, a few months later, Clint approached me after school. Happy birthday, Martin. He handed me a gift. It was a radio, a small old radio with a bent antenna. Lizette, who was walking by, muttered, Psst, that shit's more used up than my tia nacha. Oh, oh my god. Thank you, Clint. I whispered before rushing off, and that was our last interaction. What Clint didn't realize, how could he, is that I wasn't just dealing with the shame of being gay and poor, I was also dealing with the stigma of being a Latino in a majority white school, and I was dealing with all these things subconsciously. But the memory of that little radio lives on in my heart, and the islands in the stream still echo in my soul. All right.